Macro Cafe episode 10. Let's uh, get going. Uh, let's start with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is in, still in a fourth wave. We're thinking here in fourth wave primary. Um, the trend is continues to be to the upside. We are not yet uh, done, I think, in this larger third wave cycle. Uh, last uh, couple of weeks ago in the Macro Cafe, I've talked about this triangle here and likelihood that this is possibly complete that a completed move in a fourth wave with the breakup higher uh, we did get a little bit of a move to new all-time highs but it got rejected and we pulled lower and this does not change the overall picture i still think we remain in an uptrend this fourth wave still has quite a bit of room here to unfold what i'm going to be watching is i'm going to be watching the swing low back in here and then if we're getting much much lower towards thirty thousand, then i think we have to secure a third wave cycle back into these highs until then um, i don't think i can do that the reason why I'm saying this is because I think the cycle third wave is not long enough compared with this wave one. Uh, even though you have passed 161.8 multiple of it, I think it needs a little bit more room to kind of have a proper fourth wave compared with the second the moment it starts to unfold. So I think the market needs to um, go a little bit higher here, maybe towards 1000, 120 before a larger cycle fourth wave starts to unfold in a likely triangle because this move in a second was a zigzag and then this fourth wave in here will likely be either something complex or, or a triangle. So I think it's still premature, it's still early for this to be the end of the move and then a larger correction. So uh, I've done a video about it uh, I think last week on uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum Elliott Wave Analysis and then we do obviously regular daily updates into our pro room. So if you want to come over there you, you will see more about it every single day. Um, let's jump over to the next in here and I have oil which uh, this is a chart that's back from April 9th that's a couple of weeks ago um, it, really the picture hasn't changed much I talked about it back then saying that we're likely going to continue this corrective move lower we've bounced a little bit uh, but nothing significant just yet so this B wave highs back from January 2020 this remains a pretty important swing level and the market reacts to it and I think it's going to continue kind of to correct the lower um, in a pattern that I'll show you here in a second. But um, if if the if the market decides, hey, listen, we're done correcting and we're pushing back up higher, I'm going to pay you know a really really good attention because I think um, that that will kind of trigger a move there towards 75, maybe even towards 100 dollars in oil uh, if we're continuing to push and try to challenge this level. I mean, the next series resistance this year is the trend line, uh, but in terms of a pattern structure, this could be a one two, as you can see here through my alternate, and then another smaller one two, and then you continue to break to the upside. So here is the structure uh, on a smaller time frames, right? You have a wave A, B, C. If this whole thing is just a corrective pattern and we're unfolding lower for the rest of the year but I think you know with the reopening of the economy with the demand for oil continuing to grow I think uh, you know there is a chance um, that oil will continue to move to new highs so uh, I'm still giving it the a little bit of a chance to move lower slightly to create more of a proportionate move in the second wave in here before it actually rallies but i wouldn't be surprised if this is already done and we're kind of breaking up higher so either way you know i'm 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 um, i'm looking bullish on oil but i'm giving it a little bit more of a chance to to digest this whole move and correct a little bit lower we'll see if that happens if we're starting to challenge these levels uh, i'm going to jump on this uh, on this train and continue to to hopefully join the upside um here is the moving averages not much has changed again this is um, you know uh, this is the weekly time frames um, so you're looking back here at March 27th was the last time that I've looked at this thing in terms of the weekly but we're still above the 20 week moving average so this is a, a you know pretty important uh, breakout above it and uh, in terms of the dailies we're just kind of sideways in here so you know as long as we stay above the 20 I think we can we can comfortably remain on the bullish on the bullish trend uh, what's going on in gold so uh, so here is gold uh, and this is a um, you know a, a, this is a weekly chart that was uh, you know a couple of weeks ago so again I w the reason why I'm kind of keeping this it's it's because back then we were looking at this 
uh, as a possible uh, termination in this fourth wave. And we're starting to get signs that this is actually the case as we're kind of trying to get up there towards the 18, 16 and start to challenge those levels. So I wanted to show you that this count remains valid, that this move from these highs to this low is highly corrective and the chances of a move in an impulsive manner are, are, are slightly increasing in here uh, as, as, you know, as the days and the weeks kind of kind of start to to go by so uh, here is the here is the outlook so this is back from april 9th so this couple of weeks ago wave four seems to have lasted an equal amount with wave two which was uh, the wave two back in here this is the one that we're kind of measuring and then uh, this is from now so uh, you could see how we're starting trying to get up there and challenge those levels uh, at about 1816 now we're approaching the trend lines in here and and that's going to be you know likely we're going to get quite a bit of a resistance up into those levels because it matches the swing highs at 1816 it matches also the trend line coming down so i don't expect gold to you know completely kind of blast through it but you know this is a good indication that that i think we might start already uh, this fifth wave of this larger wave three so this move out of here it's still not fully fully impulsive developed just yet I would like to see something in five waves I still so far we're still looks it still looks like we're only having like a three wave advance one two three right so I need to see a little bit more and I think the moment we're gonna break above that 1816 I think that impulse will, will start to be a little bit a little bit clearer in there and you can see in here also on the moving averages right this is uh, from back from April 10 when we were below the 50 day we kind of started to challenge it and then we broke above it but now we're hitting the trend line coming from below the 200 day moving average is still up higher at about 8, 1856 so once we kind of clear that we could be you know good to go for a return to new all-time highs i mean who knows uh, you know 2000 level 2000 2100 could could very well be challenged and be on our way to that uh, larger fifth wave advance uh into gold I wanted to show you a little bit here the relationship and I mentioned a couple of weeks ago as well but I wanted to show you the relationship between copper and gold and um, you know here is the S&P 500 which is in the candlestick uh, chart and then you have the uh, kind of the copper gold relationship so you can see that it continues to be into the favor of the copper which is more of a risk on environment as long as uh, this uh, you know this this ratio continues to move higher we have to remain bullish the s&p 500 we have to be risk on and and kind of continue to stay with the, with um, you know with the narrative that things are going to go up and um you know things are getting reopening here and um you know i think things continue to look bullish guys uh, there was a little bit of a pullback in here in the ratio right but this was just a very nice corrective move and now we're kind of continuing to break and and, and we're kind of embarking in the next leg like higher right you have something similar here you had something similar back in here so this is just a simple another boot pull flag into the, the overall uptrend so continue to watch this copper gold ratio because it's a it's a very good um you know risk on uh measure uh, just a quick quick break in here if you guys wanted to get in touch with me you can find me on telegram at Elliott Wave Cafe there is a public chat there is a premium room as there as well and then you can also find me on Twitter at Elliott Cafe uh, for any you know messages or if you want me to look at any charts or if you have any questions about what we do you can kind of find me into these um, these places on there All right let's continue to go here on to uh, oh before I go uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button right? it's something i'm supposed to say so we can continue to grow right so um let's take a look at the 10-year yields in here and um, this is a chart from the april 10 when we were looking at this uh, levels of resistance we talked about you know uh, the possibility of this thing continuing to kind of come a little bit lower here and digest this this uh, you know huge increase into 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 the yields um and since then we it, you know it seems that we're kind of pulling back so we have you know what about 158 155 um i don't know if this correction is completely over we might linger a little bit longer in here we're being supported here at the 50-day moving average you can see that's the place where we kind of broke above that below the 21 so but we're still above the 50. i think that this uh, 195 levels are going to get challenged so as soon as this corrective pattern is over 
uh, that's kind of developing right now, right? We might might take another few weeks, maybe a couple of months to continue to kind of move sideways. But I think um, the next move here is going to be to the upside and these levels are going to get challenged. And I'll show you that in a second here uh, on the relationship also with copper and, and with the S&P 500. Uh, but, you know, this kind of offered a little bit of... Um, uh, you know, offered a little bit of help to the equities overall because you can see that we're continuing to rally as long as the yields are not, you know, rising up too aggressively in here. But I think the the overall trend now that we've hit the major low right back in March of last year, I think that the strength has shifted and we're kind of, uh, you know, we're going to kind of get ready to break to new all-time highs. You can see you have a left shoulder in here. This was, you know, just a big drop in here. So that's why I think just to kind of match this, this uh you know, rise in here, we're going to get a decline, something like that, right? And that's going to create this inverse pattern. Um, and then that's going to become our neckline. And this, these are going to um, break to the upside. So that's kind of my, my take on this, right? As soon as we finish the corrective pattern, uh, we're going to break to, to um, you know, towards 3% into, into the tenure. Uh, let's take a look here at the relationship again between, you know, the copper gold ratio and yields. They continue to kind of mimic each other, you know, really, really well. So they have a pretty high correlation in here. And you can see as the copper gold ratio breaks to new highs, you have, you know, the pullback in yields here continues. Uh, but I think that this will follow what's happening in here. And, and again, we're going to continue to break here. So you can see there's a slight divergence now uh, between what's going on into the copper gold ratio and the yields. And, and I think this is going to resume higher. So just to kind of pay attention that this has been a pretty good indicator of, of kind of where yields are going. So just again, that copper gold ratio, it's important. And as the markets kind of hit a major low in here, um, you know, we're, we're continuing to stay bullish um, in stocks. Uh, here is a quick relationship here between gold and real yields. Uh, as the real yields are kind of pulling down, uh, gold it's uh, starting to rally a little bit. So that's a pretty good relationship to continue to monitor. So this is kind of going back to 2016, 2015. You can see they're kind of clearly inversely correlated, and you can see kind of going back one year uh, exactly what happens. So, I, so as the real yields are starting to come down in here, right, they're negative, they're, you know, uh, minus 0. Point, almost minus 0. 0.8, uh, the gold is starting to rally in here. So, you know, this relationship, it's very, very strong, and it's something that, that needs to uh, to be monitored if you're if you're if you're interested in gold and what gold it's doing uh, let's take a look here also at the s p 500 this is a chart from again from a couple of weeks ago april 10 um you know where we said we continue to remain bullish there were a little bit of a, you know, a couple of warning signs that were approaching this the top of this trend line in here and there were slight divergences between some of those ratios i've showed you before but we have broken above the trend line right now we're kind of coming back and retesting it uh, i have uh, kind of raised my key level in here to about 30 856 from 3730 you know as a kind of a swing low in there and uh, you know obviously if we're starting to come back and, and test those levels then um, we might be you know uh, coming back into a, into a larger correction but for right now you know I'm going to continue to look at this as being a wave one and a wave two and uh, you know as, as a third wave uh, in progress uh, that's going to possibly take the S&P 500 towards, towards 5,000 and above. So, um, you know, the RSI in here is kind of trending. It's, it's, I mean, it looks pretty, pretty clean, if you ask me, right? It's just, um, you know, it, it's, it's not overbought in any way. So it um, continues to look pretty good. Uh, here is also the S&P 500 on uh, to the moving averages. This is uh, right now, uh, and this is from about a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, everything is kind of pointing higher you have the 50 the 21 day it's um you know it's a nice bullish uh, it's a nice bullish market a uh, quick look over here over the past 10 years at the performance um, you can see in here if you own gold over the past 10 years um, you've made about 18 percent on your money if you own the s p 500 uh you've made about 220 212 percent uh, but if you were in bitcoin um you were about 10,000% even with the pullback that's happening right now. Now, I know it's a smaller asset class and it's right just at about $1 trillion and you can, you know, there's like a lot of different arguments. Uh, but this is what means um, for something to come along and kind of disrupt everything that, um, you know, that was going on so far. And <laughs> so, um, you know, Bitcoin continues to be a very, very good performing asset in here, even with this uh, little bit of a pullback that we're getting in here. So let's jump and take a look at the dollar. Dollar, uh, this, again, this is a chart from, uh, from uh, um, 
couple of uh, weeks ago, I think. Yeah, we've we've looked at it um, last time, and uh, we were talking about you know the price kind of going towards the twenty day moving average, and you know that it would be very unlikely for it to continue to have a lot of strength to push through that and and uh, you know the likelihood of it actually coming lower and resuming the trend down and um, you know actually it moved from uh, 2090 to 16 that it was when we looked at it last time here to at about 90 and um, to me this continues like this looks like it's going to continue to move down you have a clean kind of corrective pattern in here right that's not impulsive it's against the trend the trend is down you're testing the 20 day moving average and now we should be resuming lower in here as well and you can see the euro dollar it's inversely correlated uh, you know just because we have so much dollar into the dollar index and this one it's at about 120 and um, you know it's a, it's a good impulse of the lows i am expecting uh, you know a like a possibility of a three wave setback in here that would be uh, you know willing to buy and enjoy uh, a move higher in the euro dollar and the continuation lower uh, into um into the dollar and here is um you know here is a chart from a couple of weeks ago and we're looking at this being a fourth wave of a larger decline in a possible c and then back here you have what's going on right now because I'm counting it, I'm counting in two ways uh, just because we have this this massive trend lines that comes from this you know from 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 further down uh, but uh, um, you know the idea was that this this decline is not fully developed yet right so it's either a C wave in an A B C and this was a fourth wave and you're pushing one more time lower before you move higher or it's a wave one of a much larger decline so either way I think we're going to take these lows and these are going to get challenged and then we're going to possibly get you know a little bit of a uh, you know larger move here into the dollar uh, before the next decline begins so I just kind of hope I made myself clear I'm looking I'm looking for one more low before you know we have something more serious into the dollar but you know who knows what's going to happen when these levels here get challenged Okay, so but we we'll still have this trend, trend line to fight with, uh, and and these are just kind of the initial. It's just the initial sell off of that. But the dollar is it's it's definitely looking looking weak um, for the past couple of weeks. All right, uh, let's uh, take a look here at um, what do I have here? Is the dollar and the emerging market? So uh, you know it's something that I'm keeping an eye on because you know I want to get more exposure to the emerging markets. I think you know they're probably going to even outperform the U.S. equities. We'll see. Uh, but as the dollar is kind of selling lower, I'm not getting a fully reaction from the emerging markets. So you know these are obviously inversely correlated as the dollar was was trying to rally in here we've been selling off and as the dollar sells off we're not really getting a proportional move into the emerging market so it could be that this is this is just a corrective move and then you're getting one more sell off in here um, just get a little better proportion maybe come back and test it one day moving average uh, but overall I think this is a good sign that that um, you know the emerging markets are uh, about to rally and and make uh, you know make new all-time highs in here and continue to break to the upside here is the inverse correlation um, between these two assets right so um you know i i i stay bullish i'm bearish on the dollar overall and uh, and bullish on the emerging markets so let's see what happens uh take a look overall here a little bit of the rotation graph and um, you can see here all the kind of main assets classes that we've been talking about here you have bitcoin you have the oil you have the s p 500 you have the dollar you have gold and then you have bonds and um you know bitcoin has been um sorry about that let me push it back uh, Bitcoin it's been losing momentum uh, you know for the past let's say several weeks in here uh, it continues to trend which means that you know if you're on the right side of this quadrant in here this is a, a highly trending market with a loss of momentum and here in the center we have um, you know we have the VTI which is the Vanguard total stock market so we're just using that as a benchmark since we have all these assets across but Bitcoin continue to be you know one of the, the, the kind of the best performing ones even though you know over the past let's say two weeks it's lost about 17 percent you can see here at the bottom but overall it's still trending and, and moving higher with the loss of momentum uh, WTI in here you know again you know trending higher with the loss of momentum a little bit in here but it's been kind of the best performer here up about four 4.8 percent over the last couple of weeks and then you have the s p 500 which you know it's highly correlated with with the vdi um you know it's been 
up about 1.3 percent over the past couple of weeks um, and it's kind of trying to get here and may maybe hopefully you know try to lead a little bit more the dollar has been gaining a little bit of strength it's it's improving overall but it's been pretty much going nowhere it's you know it's about you can see here zero percent over the past couple of weeks and then gold it's it's picking up a little bit of steam you know up 1.9 percent and then you have also a little bit of move up in bonds with the drop in yields so um you know just a little bit of a mixed market in here um you know not super strong trends um you know the s p 500 is kind of grinding higher uh, bitcoin is correcting a little bit continuing to trend um you know dollar is selling off a little bit so we have just a mixed picture but i think overall um you know we st i'm still getting that risk on sentiment and and uh, you know the feel of the reopening of everything uh, across the globe and just um you know just the kind of a, you know more of the same and a continuation higher into into the risk assets right guys listen um you know come and visit us on the early wave cafe you're invited it's open 24 7 even if i'm not there 24 7 i'm pretty much there let's say you know between 12 to 16 hours a day you know talking to the guys in the room chatting showing all kind of charts and presentations and videos every single day about what we do and taking a look at bitcoin and altcoins and um you know from gold to oil to stocks to you know i, I try to inform my members on on you know and keep a pulse on everything that's going on every single day into the markets across and then um you know so this is you know what you're going to get you have a seven day free trial if you want to come over and, and check us out there is a pro channel where I, you know, provide daily updates and commentaries. There is a chart channel with with all the main assets and and you know the main altcoins in there uh, that you can have a quick reference from weeklies to dailies. Um, and then you know there's a trade channel where I show you what I trade and the live signals that I put out there. You know we take a look at stocks as well. There is a chat room where you can you know chat along. And then you know a learning channel with different count examples and intermarket relationships, technicals and stuff like that. And then um, you know there's also a seven hour Elliott wave course that comes with a one month subscription. And and, uh, you know, you can take your time to learn everything you need to know about Elliott Wave, you know, but obviously, you know, Elliott Wave will not, um, you know, uh, make you will make you understand the markets a little bit better and will give you an idea of where you are in into into the cycle and to the process but as i've said this morning to to my guys uh you know markets are a lot about about your your kind of your mental state and the way you 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 approach and the way you think about everything and the way you see this market relationships and, and your emotions and controlling those and so on and so forth so it's it's much more than just elliott wave but elliott wave it's a good start because it kind of you know puts you on the right path and gives you perspective so again thank you guys for watching don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and um, subscribe to the channel and then um, i'll see you soon bye bye